<laughs> Call it the education of Milos Raonic. Not that he minds signing autographs and posing for selfies, quite the opposite. He loves it. Always has a moment for genuine fans. Milos Brown. Yes. <laughs> May I take a photo? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. You're a great player, man. Thank you very much. The men's are pretty small, so... It's just, with all the experience that has come with fame, he's a little more careful now. Watching out. Well, for little things, like blue Sharpies. Because blues don't fade. Is that That's how you know. They have a photo of you, and those are normally the people that wait in front of hotels. Because blues, you can't tell the difference because it won't fade whatsoever. And then they'll say <laughs> it's an old photo that Roger signed right after Wimbledon when he won in 2003. It's the underground economy. So, so what, what do you do about that? Do you, you take sign out your own anyway, sharpie, or you just you take out your own sharpie? Because they'll come to you with like 10 photos, or you say you sign one or two, and then you say, "Sorry, guys, I gotta go." Knowing the value of your name, controlling the image, it's all part of being a sports celebrity in 2016, of what's essentially become Milos Raonic, Inc. Could I take the photo, please, with this voice? My team's very big, actually, to be honest with you. So I got two coaches. I have a physiotherapist. Uh, I have a backup physiotherapist. I have a chiropractor. I have a doctor. I have a nutritionist. I have a chef that comes sometimes, a manager, an agent, somebody else that helps out on that side. So there's all these people, but at the same time, all those people understand that the most important thing is what I do and doing the best thing for me to win the last point when I'm on the court. It sounds like a business in itself. Just it is. It is a business. Uh, you are the founder of it, and uh, you're sort of managing yourself, the product, with the rest of uh, how everybody's taking care of that. If he makes it sound routine, maybe it's because it was always part of his plan. Fueled by one of the most intimidating serves in tennis, Raonic broke through in 2011, just a 20-year-old from suburban Thornhill, Ontario. He rocketed from number 152 in the world rankings to number 37 in just a month. It may have been a jolt into Canada's consciousness, but for Raonic himself, well, he says he always saw himself heading toward number one. Uh, you probably haven't seen this since you filled it out when you were 13 or 14 years uh, old, but it's the player development sheet at Tennis Canada where you were asked, what are your long-term goals? And there you have it, you know, become number one in the world in ATP singles. That's, that's not, still that's the dream? That's never going to change. Yeah. That's always where I want to be. Our finalist, Milos Raonic. The thing is, more than five years into becoming tennis's next big thing, the game's future superstar, he's still largely just that, hovering for some time now around the top ten. Which begs the inevitable question, has Raonic peaked, or is the future right now? It's what brought us here. Raonic is on the road in what may be the biggest year yet of his pro career. 2016 has all those top tier grand slams and the Olympics. So it's shaping up to be a defining season. You can see it at grand slams. That's why A rare break in his training schedule and we join Raonic as he explores yet another picturesque stop on the world pro tour. It's a beautiful park, actually. Yeah, it is a great park. If you can, <laughs> if you don't get lost. <laughs> I was told Central Park of Madrid. When I started out, I was very sort of paranoid, like stay in the room, rest, complete rest. And then I've learned that that sort of drives you a little bit crazy. And I've started to take in pretty mellow things that I enjoy, like keep what? me busy. Like Art museums, I start reading a lot. Just try to get away from technology as much as I can. That's sort of been <laughs> a little bit of a, I guess a downfall with everything. You can get yourself caught up just looking at your phone for hours and hours on end. So I've started to enjoy different things. Like a simple walk, only at six feet five inches tall, Raonic doesn't so much walk as he lopes and he doesn't switch off easily. His laser focus always on the game. Where's your game at? these days? I mean, the last time we talked was about five years ago. Yeah. You were kind of breaking onto the scene. 
uh, I think I'm up there sort of fighting for my spot to be to be the best player in the world. So last year was very difficult for me. Uh, it took a lot out of me physically and mentally, and I've turned that around, made the most of it, and I feel like I'm one of the best players in the world at this moment. Indeed, last year there was foot surgery, hip issues, a back injury. But all that's dealt with now, he hopes. In its place, one detects a renewed confidence. A very comfortable win, really. We talk about, you know, the, the big four. The big four, Novak Djokovic, Roger Federer, Andy Murray, Rafael Nadal. Do you tend to think you've cracked the big four? That you're in there with them? Level-wise, I think I'm definitely there and I can uh, compete with those guys at any tournament, any surface, and they're definitely the biggest tournaments. In fact, Raonic has beaten both Murray and Nadal. He's even beaten Federer, the Swiss legend, twice. Last point. And he does it. That was a big deal. Yeah, it was. It was, uh, it was a great sort of weight and relief. Uh, that moment on its own was very important for me. But I think more so the fact that the last nine months I struggled with injury and there it was a big relief with everything I'd faced. But at a tennis major, those events they call Grand Slams, not one victory against any of the big four. And that failure to break through has on occasion pushed Raonic's natural aggression over the edge. Now that's an emotion that we're not used to seeing from here. Yeah, I have to say I was quite embarrassed about that after. Everything was going well, I was playing well. I had a chance, a very good chance in my mind to uh, reach further than I ever reached in a slam before and it just came out of me. I felt that was my body being an enemy to me at that point and I'd done everything I could to avoid whatever happened in that situation and with that injury, but sometimes that's just not enough. And so Raonic went back to work. It's always about getting back to work and about what comes next on the path to number one. Is there a period of time in which you've got to accomplish that goal? I mean, at a certain point, the clock runs out on all of us, yes. right? Yeah, that's true. If I'm 25 right now, and uh, I feel like time is running out on me every single day, but I felt that way when I was 21. So um, if you are deserving of being number one, eventually you will be there. Uh, nothing else is going to stop you, but you got to get to that level first. That ambition, those high expectations, reach into just about every aspect of his life charity endeavors, modeling for sponsors. Even his girlfriend is a super achiever, the Canadian top model, Danielle Knudsen. And in the rare moments he gives himself permission to bask in celebrity, well. Okay, here's the last one, last video. The NBA All-Star Celebrity Game. By USA and Tracy McGrady spoils the party. Roundage. Oh, oh. How'd that song? feel like? Uh, that was even Drake there. Oh, yeah, that excited. was a lot of fun. I have to say, it's something I've wanted to do for many years. Uh, probably shouldn't have done it at that point, considering where my leg was at. But uh, there wasn't very little that was going to stop me from participating in that, uh, especially being in Toronto. Now you played basketball, right? In high school? No, never. No? Never played. That was the first time I actually played an actual game of basketball with a referee. You're kidding. Never played before that. Now, would you practice that dunk move? Uh, well, I practiced jumping before that, but I, I couldn't really jump before that because of my leg. But we did spend some time on a basketball court. I love playing basketball. I shoot around all the time, but we just can't play because fingers can go very quickly, ankles and all these kind of things that sort of make you a little bit paranoid and cautious when it comes to other sports. Does that cramp your whole lifestyle, the fact that you can't do stuff like that? No, it's all worth it. And I've, ne I've never thought of it ever as a sacrifice. I just said always to myself is, Really, this time you have right now, make the most of it so you don't have any regrets after. And you can be the guy that plays basketball when he's 30-something, that goes skiing, that buys a motorcycle then, or whatever you want it to be. But right now, make the most of your tennis. Which brings us back to this pivotal year, 
and that spotlight that's always a little more intense if you're a top seed. What happens in the days and weeks ahead really will determine if this is just another year on the Pro Tour or the year Raonic finally vaults to the top. Thank you. Maybe even takes Canada for a ride too. Olympics, this will be your second. Yeah. What does it mean to you? Uh, the greatest uh, opportunity to represent Canada with a lot of pride and on the biggest international stage. How about the fact that you're sitting there with a lot of people are basically amateur athletes, right? Yeah. You're one of those that are making a lot of money. Is, do you, is there a resistance there or do you? No, I think that's looked beyond easily because everybody's there to succeed and to win. I think that's what everybody's there um, at that particular event. There's no money being made for tennis players. There's no points being made and there's no, let's say, progressive uh, initiative for us other than wanting to win a medal, a gold medal for Canada. Your connection with Canada uh, is still very strong, uh, just as it was uh, when we talked a few years ago. I mean, you weren't born in Canada, but you were raised in Canada. Uh, you don't live in Canada anymore. Your family does, and yep. you're, you're back. Uh, how has the connection stayed so, so strong? Canada's given me every opportunity, not just to me, to my family. Uh, gave my parents great jobs so that they could give opportunities to all three of us, my brother, my sister, and myself. And because of these opportunities, uh, we've been able to step up and really make the most for ourselves. And would I be playing tennis if I didn't move at three years old to Canada? Probably not. Uh, definitely not at this level. So when you look at this, how old were you when you started? When you first Eight started? years old. Eight years old when I started playing. And uh, it was actually probably similar to this. It was uh, our walk nearly done. We run right into the future. In fact, Raonic sees a lot of his younger self in these kids. Let's bring back a few memories. Full of energy, ambition, with the audacity to take on anything and anyone. What's your name? Milos. Milos. How are you? We play a little bit? Ready? Okay. For Milos Raonic, the future is knocking and the quest to become the best player in the world may indeed be now or never. Because who knows when the next big thing is coming. Gracias.